Part 2. How to rotate any graph by any angle. Okay, however, before we begin, I would like to take some time to say thank you to Desmos for sponsoring this video. And by sponsor, I mean they are not giving me a single cent of money or anything whatsoever, but I just really like them. Very cool. And also, it's the first thing that comes up on Google for drawing graphs. Yeah, good work, Desmos. Here you go, I give you this sticker. Anyway, let us continue. In part one, we learned how to rotate a graph. It's actually really easy. First, change the x's into x cos theta minus y sine theta, and then change the y's into x sine theta plus y cos theta. That's it. That will rotate whatever graph you have by whatever angle theta you choose. Okay, so what else can we do? Let's build a windmill. Yep, that's right, we're gonna build a windmill. We're gonna take two sine waves and spin them at the same time. Okay then, so replace the x's and replace the y's, let theta run from 0 to 2 pi, and go. Ah, huh? wait a minute. Uh, oh, they're rotating on top of each other. It just looks like one single sine wave. Duh, idiot. <laughs> Alright, in that case, what if I want to make the second sine wave rotate ahead of the first one? Yeah, like this. Now that's a windmill. Hmm, fortunately this is very easy. All we need to do is take our second sine wave and make it rotate 90 degrees ahead of the first one. Yeah, 90 degrees ahead. Okay, so 90 degrees in radians. Uh, 90 degrees is pi over 2 radians. Yeah, pi over 2. So then we just go to our second sine wave and change the thetas for theta plus pi over 2. Okay, now the second sine wave should spin ahead of the first one by pi over 2. And it does. Cool, a sine windmill. Simple, but effective. And now we can add more sine waves. We can have three of them, like this. Same thing, pretty much. Except this time, the second sine rotates ahead by pi over 3. And the third sine rotates ahead by 2 pi over 3. Okay? Okay. But you could add other numbers as well. If you want. But, you know, I like these ones. Because this way, everything is equally spaced out. Perfectly balanced, as all things should be. But of course, you can have any number of signs you want. Here you go. Ten sine waves. First one spins by theta. Second one spins by theta plus pi over ten. Third one spins by theta plus two pi over ten. Fourth one spins by theta plus three pi over ten. And so on, etc, etc, up to the last one which spins by theta plus nine pi over ten. Ten equations needed for this windmill. Ten equations. Blimey, that's a lot. Fortunately, we can condense these ten equations into one single equation. Like this. Alright, now, don't worry too much about the red stuff. The red stuff is just to generate the first original sine wave. Just for the first initial one. But to generate the nine other sine waves, that's what this black L is for. You see, Desmos has this inbuilt feature called a list. L is a list. Okay? It's a list because it has these square brackets on the sides. Which normally doesn't mean anything. Normally, square brackets are the same as curved brackets. But for Desmos, they are not the same. For Desmos, square brackets indicate a list. And when Desmos sees a list, it will draw out a separate graph for each individual number in that particular list. Very handy, and much easier than copy-pasting 10 of these equations and then manually adjusting each theta by hand 36 times. I totally knew that before I made this. Moving on now. The next thing we're going to do is rotate our sine wave around a different point. Right, so up until now, we've only been rotating around the origin, 0, 0. But what if we wanted to rotate around the point... 11.5, for example. To do this, we are going to cheat. We're not going to rotate around 11.5, actually. What we're going to do is this. First, we translate the sine wave the exact opposite way, down to the point negative 11, negative 5. 
Okay, we just slide it down over here. And then we set it to rotate around the origin. Rotate around the origin, that's no problem, that's what we've been doing all this time. Okay, and then only now are we going to move it back up, back to where it was before, like this. All right, and now, as you can see, now it rotates around the point 11.5. Excellent, we're done. And for the general case, it is exactly the same process. First, we move our graph the opposite way, away from the red point. Okay, next, we set our graph to rotate around the origin. And finally, we move it back to where it was before. Okay, so as for the actual equations, here you go. To rotate around the point AB, x becomes x minus a cos theta minus y minus b sine theta plus a, and y becomes x minus a sine theta plus y minus b cos theta plus b. Hmm, looks complicated. But consider this. If we set a and b equal to zero, so in other words, if we set our graph to rotate around the point zero, zero, then indeed, yes, we do get back our original two formulas that we were using before, as expected. Anyway, windmill spinning around a different point. Yeah. Although, to be honest, it's not really a whole lot different, except for this pointy ninja shuriken looking thing in the middle. It's all right, I guess. But we can do better. We can move the center around. Yeah, in fact, we can make it move automatically by letting the coordinates depend on theta. Ooh, now that's an idea. Let's try it. Let's try, hmm, I don't know, let's make it rotate around the point cos theta sine theta. What happens then? Ah, it goes in a circle. Oh, well, of course it does. Cos theta and sine theta, that's the parametric representation of a circle. Yeah, that explains it. As theta goes from 0 to 2 pi, the center travels along the circle. Makes sense. Now let's take a break from windmills for a moment and switch over to parametric graphs. Oh yeah, parametric graphs. I almost forgot about those. Oops. Anyway, yeah, we can still do the same thing. In fact, it's even easier in parametric. To rotate around a new point in parametric, all we have to do is add the point. For example, this rotating Lissajous curve. Say I want to move it up to the point 2, 1. Okay? Just write a plus 2 here, and write a plus 1 there. There we go. Now it's rotating around the point 2, 1. But of course, it doesn't have to be a fixed point. We can move it along any path we want. Well, basically any path. I mean, okay, obviously we got to know what the path's two parametric equations are first. You know, those two black things below. And well, uh, okay, yeah, I suppose the only real way to do that is through trial and error. But whatever, man, you know, the exact precise path doesn't really matter anyway. It just looks cool. I think. Maybe. Well, if not, we can always add more graphs and make them chase each other around. Anyway, maybe you're thinking, Hey Red, wait a sec. We're using theta to make these graphs spin and move around. Okay, but who said we had to use theta? What about t? What if we used t instead? Now let's all agree to never use T again. Nah, okay, seriously, yes, yes, you can technically use T, 
But the problem is, t is what we're using to draw our graph in the first place. Okay, so if we reuse t, then it's going to start changing the shape. The graphs just start deforming themselves in highly unpredictable ways. And then it's not really a rotation anymore, is it? Although maybe you could say this one is kind of like a rotation. Sort of. Look, he's trying his best, okay? But most of the time, it does weird stuff like this. Okay, now this one is supposed to be a single spinning sine wave. A single sine wave. And if you tilt your head, maybe you can kind of see it in there. But it's being consumed by this giant field of what appears to be tan lines. Huh. And it gets even worse if we switch back to Cartesian equations. You know what this is supposed to be? Take a guess. Wrong. This isn't a sine wave. This is just a straight line. Yeah, it's a line. Y equals x. The line. Y equals x, the simplest graph of all. No, seriously, check this out. I can even graph the normal y equals x line on top, in red. And now you can sort of see it in there, spinning around. But as soon as I add in these two terms, sine of 5x and sine of 5y, wham! Our beautiful line just decomposes into this toxic, foamy acid with bubbles. I told you, very strange and unpredictable things happen when you add extra x and y terms. However, there is one exception to this. There is one useful thing we can do, well at least that I can think of, and I am talking about spirals. Oh yeah, it's spiral time. Starting over with our good old sine wave, y equals sine x. Okay, now. We know how to rotate this, of course. To rotate it, replace the x's with x cos theta minus y sine theta, replace the y's with x sine theta plus y cos theta, and this new equation will rotate our sine wave by the angle theta. Yeah, we know that already. But consider this. What would happen if we rotated the outside faster than the inside? Okay, think about that. Rotate the outside faster than the inside. What would happen? As you can see, our sine wave wraps around itself into a spiral. Interesting. But how can we possibly achieve this? How do we rotate the outside faster than the inside? Here's how. Say we've got a random point in the plane. This one. Now, how can we measure how far away this point is? How far away it is? Well, that's just the distance. The distance. That's it. The distance. What's the distance? Well, if you have a point with coordinates x, y, then its distance from the origin is the square root of x squared plus y squared. Yeah. Okay, so the distance is the square root of x squared plus y squared. Now let's bring back our sine wave. This sine wave is being rotated by the angle theta. The bigger theta is, the more it spins around. The smaller theta is, the less it spins around. Okay, so what happens if I replace theta with the square root of x squared plus y squared? Hmm, well, for all the points that are really close to the origin, their distance is really small, so they won't spin around very much. But the points that are really far away, their distance is very large, so they're going to go flying. Aha, and that's exactly what happens. There you go, spiral. But there was no need to replace theta with the distance. We could have just added the distance. Oh yeah, let's do that. And now we can make it spin around again. Spinning spiral. But there are also other types of spirals we can do. For example, instead of adding the distance, what if we multiplied by the distance? Hmm, multiply by the distance. In that case, initially it starts off as a normal sine wave. But then, as it spins around, the spiral effect 
gets stronger and stronger, and it slowly wraps on itself. And it just keeps on wrapping. It never stops. If I let this go long enough, eventually it's going to turn the whole screen red. And then Desmos will start screaming in agony, and probably eventually kill itself. And I will be left disappointed once again. But spirals work even better on parametric graphs. Well, I think they do anyway. In my opinion, they do. We can also invert the spiral, make the inside spin faster than the outside. To do that, instead of multiplying by the distance, we divide by the distance. And there are many, many more variations on the spiral that you can try. Just experiment with it. See what happens. I've been trying a few, and I've got some nice ones. Hmm, maybe I should make a compilation. Ah, maybe, yeah, uh, maybe I will. Anyway, there was still one last thing I wanted to show you, and I saved the best till last. We're going to do a rotation in 3D. Yeah, that's right. Rotate in the third dimension. Hmm. But not real 3D. Not real 3D. Okay, I'm not talking about adding in a Z-axis or anything like that. Desmos doesn't even do a Z-axis. Nah, nah, nah. We'll still be in our 2D plane, but we can project a 3D rotation onto the 2D plane. A projection. 3D onto 2D. Wow. Now this is some really advanced stuff. Vector spaces and linear transformations, matrices and quaternions, homotopy groups, lie groups, differential algebraic topology, Motizuki into universal Teshmala theory, and the generalized continuum hypothesis. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just messing with you. Don't worry, it'll be fine. We'll be fine. But it doesn't matter anyway, because we've run out of time again. Ugh. Oh well. Part 3. I will see you there. Make sure you subscribe. Please.